हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट दिस इज रेखा मगिरवार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर श्री शिवाजी साइंस कॉलेज अमरावती फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ पाइनस बिफोर दैट वन मस्ट नो अबाउट द जिम्नोस्पम जिम्नोस्पम हैव डिराइव फ्रॉम द वर्ड दैट इज ग्रीक लेटर्स जिम्नोस मीन्स नेकेड एंड स्पर्मा मीन्स सीड that is the plants with the naked seed these gymnosperms have evolved on our planet in the late paleozoic era say about 265 million years before and they flourished well in the mesozoic era that is the age of the dinosaur so here you can see some of the beautiful pictures of the gymnosperms where the cones are highlighted let us focus on the most uh, prominent or the largest uh, order coniferae these are mainly having the branched evergreen trees and the branches are dimorphic with needle shaped leaves and the characteristic feature is the presence of the resin canals in the family pinaceae the members are monoecious that means the male and the female cone they are present on the same plant and the branches are dimorphic with the needle like leaves the pollen grains are mostly winged and the oviliferous scales are having the two ovules on it upper side so let me tell you one important thing when you discuss the life cycle of any plant you must know about its classification that is systematic position then you will have to study the morphology of the plant body later on the anatomy of the different organs and finally the reproduction of the plant so here is the classification or the systematic position for the genus that we are going to discuss the division is coniferophyta the class is coniferopsida and the order is coniferae family pinaceae and the genus pinus these plants are very well suited to the cool temperate region when we see its distribution you can see clearly that they are distributed in the northern hemisphere and they form the evergreen forest in the temperate northern region or the subalpine region of the globe in india they have been represented by six different species and they are commonly called as chir chilgoza mercus or the khasa pine they are mainly found in the northeast or the northwest region of the himalaya these are the plants actually they are the tall trees and say up to the height of 30 meters and here you can see the typical pyramidal or the conical shape which is due to the monopodial or the radial branching the plant body of the pinus is a sporophyte which is growing in the temperate xerophytic habitat it is differentiated into root stem and leaves now we will focus on the morphology of this plant and let us first of all discuss about the roots the roots are the primary roots and they are typically tap root system which is not penetrating deep into the soil and the lateral roots they actually fix the plant body in the soil and the root hairs they are poorly developed and they are associated with the fungal hypha in this case it is the ectomycorrhiza mainly the members of the basidiomycetes are uh, involved here in the symbiotic association and these mycorrhiza they increase the rhizosphere area for the absorption of the water and mineral nutrients there are reports that the death rate of the pinus seedling increases if these mycorrhiza are not associated with the pinus seedling the shoots these shoots are cylindrical erect and woody they are dimorphic means that is having the two types of morphology the long shoots and the dwarf shoots the long shoots are the branches of unlimited growth 
दे आर हैविंग दी अपाइकल बर्ड विच ग्रो अनलिमिटेडली दैट्स व्हाई दे आर अनलिमिटेड इन ग्रोथ दे आर डेवलप्ड फ्रॉम द एक्साइल ऑफ दी स्केली लिव्स एंड दे बेयर ओनली स्केली लिव्स एंड दीज आर डेवलप्ड ऑन द मेन ट्रंक then there are dwarf shoots which are also known as brachy blast and these are actually not having the apical bud that's why their growth is limited these dwarf shoots they bear two types of leaves that is the scaly leaves and the foliage leaves these dwarf shoots they are shed every 2 or 3 years and they leave the scars on the stem then let us know about the leaves these leaves are very specific there are uh, two types of leaves the scaly leaves and the foliage leaves the scaly leaves are present on both the branches that is the long shoot and the dwarf shoot they are thin membranous and dark brown in color and they are not involved in the process of the photosynthesis so dear students you might be wondering that what exactly role they play so they are involved in the protection of the young bud then there are the foliage leaves which are acicular this is the technical term used to denote the shape of the leaves that is the needle shape in this picture you can see the needle shape foliage leaves and these leaves are persistent they last for many years and they are actually the site for the photosynthesis and as i told you that these plants are very well suited to the temperate xerophytic habitat that's why such type of leaves are the adaptation to adjust with the surrounding environment or to survive in such a stress condition here i would like to tell you that these needles they are developed in a special structure which is a pouch like structure and that is known as spur so the number of the needles in a spur varies say from example if there is a single needle that is monofolier and that is found in the pinus monophylla that may be bifolier with two needles trifolier three needles and likewise there is a quadri or pentafolier needles in a spur that is the foliar spur so this was all about the morphology of the pinus plant and now i would like to tell you about the anatomy so many a times the students are reluctant to learn about the anatomy because all the tissue and uh, uh, the terms confuse them so you just remember in your mind that you'll have to first focus on the three main regions the epidermal region the cortical region and the vascular region so let us see now in the root so here the above picture is the diagrammatic view and the lower one is the cellular view so in the diagrammatic view you can only see the different layer so the primary root of the pinus is more resembling with the uh, dicot root the outermost uh, layer is of the epidermis and some of the cells they give out the unicellular root hair as i already mentioned that these root hairs are poorly developed and they are associated with the ectomycorrhiza this epidermal region is followed by the cortex and which is made up of parenchymatous cells and some of the cells are having the resinous substance then there is a boundary of vascular region which is represented by the endodermis and these cells from the endodermis are having the thickening bands on their radial wall the endodermis is followed by the pericycle which is multi layered then about the vascular region in the root it is diamonds two or hexarch means six arch so the vascular bundles are having the uh, xylem in the form of the hexarch condition that means the metaxylem in the center and the protoxylem towards periphery the bundles in the root are radial that means the xylem stands and the phloem stands they alternate with each other one important feature you have to remember here that the protoxylem forms the y shaped structure and the resin duct is present in between the two arms of this y shaped structure and the pith may be poorly developed or it may be absent regarding the secondary growth of the uh, in root i would like to mention here that some of the strips inside the phloem they become 
uh, can they show the cambium strips and they become active they add the secondary xylem centripetally that means towards the center and the secondary phloem towards outer side that is centrifugally away from the center and later on there is the active cambium strip just in the pericycle region opposite to the protoxylem so initially due to the difference in the cambium strip the way ring formed is wavy but later on it becomes circular so due to the secondary growth there is enormous increasing pressure from the inner side and the primary tissue gets crushed so outside the vascular region the cork cambium becomes active and it adds the cork and the uh, secondary cortex so this is how the secondary growth takes place in the root then you can see here clearly that the tissue from the endodermis up to the epidermis is sloughed off and you can see now the cork is the uh, final protecting layer here is the diagrammatic view for the stem so the stem in outline is irregular due to the appressed uh, scaly leaves and the dark branches are present on it then uh, the epidermis is heavily cutinized which is followed by the cortical region the outermost cortex is uh, hypodermis which is followed by the parenchymatous cell the endodermis is little bit indistinguished and followed by the multilayered pericycle you can see clearly five to nine vascular bundles they are arranged in a ring and these bundles they are conjoined collateral open and endarched here you can see different than the anatomy of the root the xylem and the phloem actually they are present on the same axis that is and they are present side by side that is conjoined and collateral when the cambium is present we say that the bundle is open and different than the exarch here the protoxylem is in the center and metaxylem towards periphery that means the endarch condition so in the center there is a pith and some of the cells are having the resinous substances so you do remember that in the conifers the presence of the resinous substance is found in different parts of the plant organs so regarding the secondary growth in the stem here i would like to tell you that the cambium is present in between the xylem and phloem that is in the fascicle intrafascicular and in between the vascular bundle that is interfascicular so to start with the secondary growth what happens first these strips of the cambium that is inter and intravascular cambium they join together to form the complete ring and once the ring is formed the secondary growth is activated by the addition of the secondary tissue that is secondary xylem towards inner side and the secondary phloem towards outer side then here you can see that due to this uh, secondary growth the there is a increment in the diameter or the girth of the stem every year there is addition of the tissue and in the xylem region the wood is differently named that is the spring wood and the autumn wood so this is interesting to know that this is the seasonal activity when in the spring season the growth resume and there is a formation of new leaves and new branches that's why there is active translocation of the nutrients and the water and the tracheids they are formed with the broader diameter and in the autumn there is a leaf fall so there is no requirement of the active translocation of the water and the nutrient that's why the tracheids are of the smaller diameter and this is how the spring wood and the autumn wood can be easily seen in the secondary xylem region every year so these are again the important feature uh, or the important structure they are known as the bars of the stanio this is nothing but the deposition of the cellulose and pectin and these are the crescentic strips which are found in uh, between the uh, border pits so these are also found in the during the secondary growth so this is the very very important structure you should remember that is the transection of the pinus needle here it is the triangular in outline that means there must be three needles in the spur the outline is represented by the epidermis which is heavily cutinized 
and it is having the stomata which are sunken stomata they are present deep inside the cavity then there is a hypodermal region which is made up of sclerenchymata cell and at the corner it is uh, thicker this is followed by the mesophyll region before that there are resin canals present and this mesophyll is very specific because it has the poly polygonal cells and these cells they are showing the peg like infolding so nature is so wonderful you will be surprised to know even though the plant height is so big but the needles are reduced to a needle uh, very the leaves are reduced and you can clearly see that these peg like infolding they are actually increasing the surface area and they are compensating even though the leaves are small the area for the photosynthesis has increased because of such infolding then there is a endodermy is followed by pericycle the number of the vascular bundle also varies in different species here the bundles are collateral open and with the ad axial phloem and ad axial that means the xylem is present on the dorsal side and the phloem is present on the ventral side apart from this you can see there is a sclerenchymatous girdle on the about the vascular bundle which is the transfusion tissue so for this uh, uh, internal structure of the needle uh, you must have to remember the xerophytic features let us revise the xerophytic features the shape is reduced to a small uh, acicular or needle shape because these plants they cannot afford the broad lamina they are reduced to a single needle like structure then there is epidermis which is heavily cutinized with the sunken stomata they reduce the rate of the transpiration then the hypodermis is uh, uh, you, you can see that they are more in the marginal or the edges and the polygonal area showing the infolding and finally the the presence of resin is common in all these different parts so in in this particular picture you can see that the mesophyll region is sandwiched between the upper and the lower epidermis so this was all about the plant body the morphology and the anatomy of the pinus in the next video we will be discussing about the reproduction of the pinus thank you thank you so much